welcome everybody for being here and welcome Elizabeth Bachman for Thank taking you, the time Tina. to be here with us and to share with us all your expertise and all your knowledge and wisdom and how we can all uh, become get more online and offline gigs. And but I would say from the time, the moment in time, we better uh, learn how we can get uh, a more solid and sustainable online presence. And this is the topic I'm running um, as as the 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 core of all these interviews throughout this this period. And before I dive in, I would like to introduce you properly. So I'm going to read your introduction so we everybody knows who you are and get to know a little bit uh, about you. So Elizabeth Bachmann is the go-to person for advanced level training in speaking presentation skills, sales, and leadership. With a lifetime spent perfecting the art of presenting, she helps high-level clients master a message that brings, one, the funding they need, two, the allies they want, and the recognition they deserve. As of after a speaker and a strategist in Silicon Valley, nationally and internationally, Elizabeth works with leaders and influencers who need to become concise and compelling presenters. She helps them present a smart, down-to-earth, loose, friendly, even funny, and still be taken seriously. Elizabeth has directed such lum luminaires as Luciano Pavarotti and Placido Domingo in more than 50 operas around the world giving her a wealth of tools to help businesses profession, business professionals become respect, respected presenters. Fluent in five languages, she is adept at working with presenters from many countries, bringing her global experience to her clients. Elizabeth is the host of the podcast, Speakers Who Get Results, you can see her mic there, where she interviews international experts on presenting, leadership, visibility, and cross-cultural communication. And her motto is strate strategic speaking for results. When you want to make a difference, not just a point. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you, Tulia. Obrigada. Dankeschön. Merci. Grazie. All of those. Uh, Tulia has also been a guest on Speakers Who Get Results. She was one of the early people I wanted to interview. So she's in one of our very early episodes. Um, and I'm delighted to be here. Thank you so much. If my internet, if my face disappears, you'll still get the video. I'm, I've been doing Zoom nonstop, but I haven't been doing Webinar Jam, and I suspect that Webinar Jam takes a little bit more bandwidth. So, mm. um, so I apologize in advance if that happens. It's one of the things you have to think about when you are your online presence. So, uh, thank you, Tulia. So, how can I be of service to you tonight? Okay, so I have a list of questions here, but I would like to, first it's more as a curious question before diving into our topic, is how does directing an opera connect with public speaking? I have my ideas, but I want just uh, to check with you, the experts. Well, I started as an actor when I was five, actually, I was, um, I always think of it as being dedicated to the art of great communication. And my mother said that I was the best darn bunny rabbit she'd ever seen. And I said, ha, ah, she likes me. I love this. So I wanted to keep on doing it. I became a director. And then I ran a small opera company in the Tyrol in Österreich, not too far from where you live. Yeah. And, uh, and now I'm using all that experience to help presenters because 
it turns out that the skills you need to sell a song aren't that different from the skills you need to sell a product or a service or within a company to sell an idea. It's the difference is just vocabulary. It's very interesting. Uh, many years ago, I gave a presentation in one of the Toastmasters events in Krakow, actually. Mm. And I made an analogy of saying the speakers as an orchestra director, that you mm -hmm. really need to lead your audience as you as an orchestra director has to do. So you really need to know where you get them and the emotions and the ups and downs and and something like that. So I, I always uh, believe music has a lot to do. We can learn a lot from, oh, yeah. from this and bring to our public speaking skills. And when I'm training speakers, I talk a lot about the melody of your message, how you deliver your information. The problem is you could have the best speech in the world. And if you don't have anywhere to give the speech, it won't do you any good. So finding places to speak, especially nowadays when the online presence is so important, that's really what we're talking about today. Otherwise we could talk for hours and hours about how to be great speakers, but um, I'm delighted to be doing this here with you today, Tulia. Okay, so let's get started directly in your five secrets on how well, we can get five, booked <clears throat> online yes. and offline. I like to think of it as <clears throat> why put in the time to do this, why it's worth it, who to speak to, where to find them, what you need to offer when you reach out to, to offer yourself as a speaker, and how to actually get yourself to do it because mm -hmm. looking for speaking gigs is the easiest thing in the world to put off it's so easy to procrastinate and so really it's reconnecting to the why and a big thing that i've been thinking about lately is what's happening with the speaking world and where we're going and what we're doing uh, i mean I, first of all I have to remember to be grateful every day, grateful for the internet and the fact that we are sheltering in place. If we are sequestered, if we are supposed to stay at home, we have the internet, which is allowing most of us to stay in business and allowing a lot of companies to stay in business. I think back to the war in the Balkans, You know, we're not in Sarajevo getting bombed. We're not in London during the Blitz having buildings being bombed around us. We're, if people are complaining, it's really a first world problem. We're a lot better off than earlier generations have been. I remind myself of that because I tend to wake up every morning and think about what should I do? The shoulds, you know, I need mm -hmm. to do, do, do. I should, should, should. And so I always try to make myself remember to be grateful Mm -hmm. And then I say, okay, and how can I move on to put food on the table? Yes. So um, the why is speaking is still one of the absolute best ways to promote your business and to promote your practice. I do truly believe that live events are going to come back, but probably not for another year and a half not until we have a vaccine. The big, the big events aren't gonna come back until we have a vaccine. I think that smaller events will come back. We will be doing live events. And part of that is because online is great, but what you miss by not having the online events is you miss that chance encounter in in line, you know, you're standing in line to get a coffee or something. It's the it's the chance encounters, it's the unusual things that were or being in the room where the energy of ideas absolutely has you doing. We we do miss that. And I remember when I first started going to conferences in my opera business and my opera career, realizing that the real work at the conferences takes place in the hallway. You know, mm. it's the conversations, it's the people handing their their business cards back and forth or trading their LinkedIn profiles. 
So we are missing that. That is going to come back, but not for a while. Mm -hmm. The thing that I think that this shutdown is doing is now means that online will always be a part of it. I don't think we're ever going to see an event that is just live. Mm. I think we will always have to do, especially in the event business, I mm -hmm. think we will always have to have the online component. And people were doing that already, but I think that's going to be very important. As much as anything, because even if you have the best venue in the world and everything's clean and people are healthy, there will be people who don't want to go out anymore. You know, mm -hmm. I have, you know, I personally have some immune system issues. And so there I have to think hard about where I go. <clears throat> so online presence is always going to be here. Um, I have a podcast, as you can see the microphone here. And I've been thinking a lot about what's going to be the best thing for each for your business. Mm -hmm. And I finally wrote it down because awesome. I made a list. I made a list that the advantages, I mean, there's sort of four categories you go through. You can speak as a panelist in a private group like this one. So this is a webinar like this one. This is the sort of thing that we are doing today. And people more or less know the host. That's either online or um, online or it's live. The good thing about that is people are already ready to listen. If the host says this is somebody you want to pay attention to, then they're ready to listen and you can get the instant gratification. If Elizabeth, you are speaking, just one, one second, yes. one second. We lost you, your image. I know that. You can, you can, can you hear me. Okay, so you know. Okay. okay. I do I do know that. I can't do anything about it. It's just okay. it's the program, the the tech. You know, computers okay. are great until they're not. So I'm afraid, just cross your fingers that I come back. It's It will come when it decides. I can't do anything about it. Okay, we can hear you. That's important. Okay, so the in, you, you can get instant gratification and instant results and connections if you are speaking with a private group. Um, the disadvantage to that is if you're in the wrong group, it's only as good as what the host has put together. So knowing that Tulia was sponsoring this, I'm thrilled because Tulia, I, I totally trust Tulia and I know that her people are my people and all of that. So I know that you've got a good thing. But if you're not careful about who you speak with, you could waste a lot of time. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the second way to do it, number two, is mm -hmm. presenting as a speaker or a panelist on Facebook Live or LinkedIn Live. And that's a little, that's, it's like the private group, but more public. So anybody can watch if they want. And the, the advantages to that is it's an it, evergreen video. So you can leverage it. You can always share that and say, hey, I was, I did this great interview with Tulia Lopez. Please listen to that. I have some other tips for leveraging this, by the way, if you want. Um, and, but the disadvantage is the same as with the live, with the invited events. It's only as good as the host is. So if you're not with the right host, it's not so great. The third one is being interviewed on an internet radio show. There are a lot of there are a lot of those. The thing is that you have again you have evergreen content, so that's an advantage. The disadvantage is that the listenership on internet radio shows is pretty low. And the other mm -hmm. thing is that advertisers, most of them are sponsored, most of them are commercial. And mm -hmm. the advertisers care about how many listeners you are so you have so the station will often lie about the numbers and tell you they have a lot more listeners than you really have so that's a long term it's worth doing but it's a long term strategy and it's mostly useful if you can leverage it by sharing the link and say telling people who are ready to listen to you hey listen to this and then you have podcasts 
I am having so much fun hosting speakers who get results. And by the way, if you're interested, you can find me on iTunes or Spotify or Stitcher. Anything speakers who get results is my podcast. And, and there goes my video again. Okay, so the advantage of that is you're introduced to new audiences. You have a chance. It's like putting up a billboard by the road. You have a chance to reach people you would never reach before. And the more you appear, the more people know about you. And there again, you have evergreen content to share. The disadvantage is you don't know who's listening. You have no way of reaching them unless you have a free gift that people will really buy into. Most of the time people listen and they may be listening a year later. So it's good for getting out there. The key is what do you want with your business? Do you have a business that depends on local traffic? Do you have a business where you want to meet people in your city, in your community? Then you should really focus on the events that are virtual meeting events, virtual networking events for a community that you are part of where the listeners are local. Now, I am, uh, I'm an international trainer and I'm really trying to build my presence internationally. I have clients in, Germany, Austria, and the United Kingdom, I'm trying to reach more of them. So speaking on podcasts is a good thing for me. Mm. So that's really the why. And um, Tulia, I, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts about this. Um, I have um, actually here some questions. I don't know if I should ask now, but as you give the break, um, is because you talked about LinkedIn Live. I don't want it to go um, to the in depth on this because it's a little bit off track, but I was just curious because I know LinkedIn Live is not allowed to everybody or it is it in America no, or is not no. for us here in Europe. No, actually LinkedIn Live, I don't know what they're doing or what they think they're doing. You have mm. to apply to be a LinkedIn Live mm -hmm. speaker and um a lot of people are really terrible <laughs> and and it can take six months to get approved okay so i applied okay. a year ago and they still never got back to me okay if you could get on linkedin live great um a lot of my clients are i do most of my prospecting on linkedin because that's really where my corporate clients are and i do a lot of corporate work but yeah it's great yeah, if you can get on it, yeah. but not everybody can. Yeah, that's what my question because I've seen like the guys where like people that are really like, you know, that everybody knows that they have huge followers, and so I was wondering. Um, I was uh, my question here also to be, Elizabeth, what is the big difference between a podcast and a radio show? Uh, a radio show is connected to the station. So a radio show really belongs to iHeartRadio or Blog Talk Radio or something like that. And the other thing is that the hosts have to pay. Almost all of the ones that I know about, it's very expensive to have a radio show and you have to invest. Um, well, I have a friend who, who gets people to to be part of her channel and it's a ten thousand dollar investment to start mm -hmm. a podcast you can do yeah. not totally for free uh, the big difference between podcast and uh is whether they are video or audio. well we all know i'm sure you've talked about this tulia is that video shows up more on social media. And that is the main way that people find you now is on social media. So, you know, if you Google somebody, <clears throat> their LinkedIn profile is almost always the first thing that comes up. Mm -hmm. So being able to be on a podcast, either audio or video, I work with a wonderful company called Poditize, 
And the reason why I decided to sign with them, to hire them to do the work, is because I wanted video, audio, and a blog. And I don't know, I hate to write blogs. And my YouTube channel up until now was really terrible. I was just basically all I could do was to get the audio out there. So the fact that they do it all for me, now all I have to do is find interesting people and talk. And, well, I can talk. That's easy. <laughs> they do all the rest of it for me, which is great. That's made That has made a huge difference. It still means that I have to find places to speak. Mm -hmm. So that... Um, did that you is have like another a, question? Yeah, it is for as a bridge to the to uh, because we've been talking about the why, so we should go to the who now, and and you know, mm -hmm. you're talking about a little bit about the who and the where, but I um as everything you said uh, besides the why, besides because we all should know why we do things, right, people? <laughs> we should know why we are doing <laughs> spending our times in something, um. It, it, one important thing here is the strategy, right? And yes. if you really want to develop this, this uh, the, use speaking as a career, as a speaker, but or or as a um, a marketing tool for to propel your career, your business, etc. Both ways need a strategy, and that's. Uh, when I say what I, I said this before and I repeat, which is the speaking business is a business. So it you have a business. to see it as a business. It's like mm -hmm. even if you use the speaking as, as you say, it is a very good a tool platform for you to propel career, business, etc. You still have to see it and plan it strategically as a business. So that's what I would like to add. I, I agree 100%, more than 100%. It is a business. Uh, my company is strategic speaking for results because it's all about the strategy. That's my brand. So the question is, if you're gonna speak on podcasts, uh, it's really, it's the same thing for, whether you're going to speak online or live, you start out with who is your audience? Who do you, who do you want to reach? And who do you know who can, uh, who can get you there? So basically, who are the people you know that uh, referral partners are very important? It, who do you know who works with the same people you do but doesn't compete with you and could introduce you to people. Very much, referrals are very important. The other thing about podcasts as opposed to say locally based networking events is the good ones are booked two or three, four, five months out. So podcasting is a really good strategy for raising your visibility and you want to make sure that you are booking the long-term things. And that's easy to forget because there's so many short-term short -term things to do that you wanna make sure that you are thinking about the long-term. That's part of the business. You know, it's a, it is a long-term strategy. The more you're out there, the better though. Mm -hmm. The best way to find people is, that I find is to find out which of the podcasts or the internet radio shows that work with the people you're trying to reach. And then for the podcasts, you can go to iTunes or there's a thing called Podchaser, another one called Listen Notes and search for maybe people who are big names in your field and find out where they're speaking and see if that would be a fit for you. You do need to do the research. So that's important. Um, you know, I work with women in business mostly. So I really look for that. I have male clients and men who come and find me, but it's usually through referrals. Also want to make sure that the podcast is still alive and still broadcasting because 90% of podcasts fade after the first six months or so. So okay. you want to make sure that this is someone who's still out there and still recording. 
or you can waste a lot of time. So mm. that's sort of who and where to find them. Another great way is to ask the people that you currently, your current customers, ask them, who do they listen to? What are the groups that they go to? If you want to speak to a group where you're going to be known, or what are the podcasts that they listen to that they listen to for their business? So I have a wonderful client named Hunter, and he has a company that that provides gig workers for manufacturing. And he, so he's very busy now. We, uh, and he said, well, I need to know the podcasts that speak to manufacturers and people who run warehouses. And I had no idea about that. That wasn't something I'd ever looked at at all. But we asked his top 10 clients. And we ask them to just listen, you know, what are the podcasts that you listen to? What are the associations? Because there are podcasts about everything. There are Mm -hmm. podcasts about business. There are podcasts about self-care. There are podcasts about chocolate. That's self-care for me. So podcasts about chocolate. There are podcasts about everything. And what we found was we asked his clients and they came back. Each person answered on their own and there were three podcasts and two associations that came up more than once there were that came out three or four times out of 10 people so that's what we're focusing on Mm. that's a good way to do it another good way the best way to another best way to find them is to ask the people who speak to the same people you do where have they spoken so referrals from other speakers is one of the best ways to do this. This is it's something that you can do within your community. If you know Tulia and the people who are on Tulia's Facebook, part of her community, where have they spoken? Mm-hmm. The good news is you can be Christine in Holland and um, whoever it was in Kenya, whatever, you can, you can all be around the world and still be part of the community. So that's a good one. Another thing we get to is the what, and then talk about how to do it. Uh, What you need is you want to make sure that uh, you have a one, a speaker one sheet. So you have a description of what you do. You have a good bio, you have a good picture. And one of the things that I like to use a lot are a list of what are good questions to ask me. Not every, not every host wants to know this, but it gives the host a clue as to how to, um, how you can find people, you know, where the conversation could go. Mm-hmm. The one thing I will say is, if the host goes off on a tangent, this happens a lot, if the host goes off on a tangent, you can still come back to your core message. Mm-hmm. Be ready to go off into your core man- message if the host gets distracted and starts asking about something else. Mm-hmm. Make sure you know what your core message is for that. And one thing, just uh, as a note yeah. uh, on that uh, subject, is I do ask the questions. You know what? What should mm-hmm. I ask you? What do you want me? And not like what should I ask you, but it's more like what should I not miss. And because yes. it's something that you find important that I should ask you, then we make sure that you cover that aspect. But at the mm-hmm. same time is also sometimes I ask, depending on the type of the conversation, which our conversation, uh, I believe, wouldn't, wouldn't lead to, to any problems. But depending on the subject, I also ask, what should I not ask? Or what should I not mention? Because you never know. There might be certain things that a person doesn't want to talk about, and you better know in advance. At, and indeed, that's a useful thing to know. It's a very gracious thing. It's very, how to be good to your guests is to exactly. ask them what, yeah. what you don't want to talk about. I can't think of anything that it would be, but you know, I'm a grown up. I'm you know, I'm old enough. If you ask me something I don't want to ask answer, I'll be able to turn it a different direction. Yeah, but but sometimes uh, some some people might be working uh, from a corporate world, 
and mm -hmm. we ah, are yes, discussing yes. this and they might not want to mention something or not even the name of the company, for example. That's true. That's very true. Yes. One of the other big question, and this is the one I want to make sure I get to, is how do you get yourself to do it? Because mm -hmm. it's time consuming. And it's also the sort of thing where you you need to be doing some, you need to do some outreach. It may be not quite cold calling, <clears throat> but you need to out, reach out to your fellow speakers and say, would you introduce me? Where, you know, you have to actually be proactive around it. Mm -hmm. And that's, there's always another email to answer or something else to write, or maybe I need to fiddle around with my website a little bit. There's always something else you can do <laughs> instead of reaching out. So my favorite way, a couple of things. One is you can hire somebody who whose job it is to find you thing, find you podcasts and then who will make the phone call for you, the initial phone call for you. Mm -hmm. If you're serious about it, then you can really hire someone to do something around that. I have just done that. I I have been resisting that for a long time, but I know that I'm not going to get around to it. Mm. The other way is this is I I invented this for my opera singers actually <clears throat> because young opera singers if they don't have an agent yet need to figure out how to do this <clears throat> and I uh, I created what we call the fabulous friend system. Fabulous. The fabulous friend. Okay. <clears throat> and the key is to team up with a colleague mm -hmm. who does something similar but not the same <clears throat> mm -hmm. so you don't want to you don't want to have someone who does exactly the same thing that you do you team up with somebody and then one hour a week you are you are each other's assistant now you have to commit to this. You have to be, the time has to be sacred. You're going to meet on 10 o'clock in the morning every Thursday, no matter what. Don't, mm. don't give up because it's so easy to not get around to this. But for instance, Tulia, if you and I were to do this, mm. you would give me a list of the people you wanted to reach and you would write out a little script for me and I would do the same thing for you. The nice thing now is we can do this on Google Docs so we can keep it up. We make the list. And then for that hour, you would be my assistant and I would be your assistant. So mm -hmm. I would be calling the people on your list to say, hello, I'm working for Tulia Lopez and she is the best speaker trainer. <clears throat> She's got this wonderful show called Profit Presentations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You've got to bring her in, have her speak on your program. And you would be saying, ah, oh, Elizabeth Bachman, former opera director, interesting speaker. She does a lot of speaking for business. And you would be doing that for me because it's always, <clears throat> it's always easier to, to rave about somebody else than it is to talk about yourself. Absolutely. You can think of it. Uh, the unofficial name for this system is it's always easier to do the dishes at somebody else's house, right? <laughs> it's true. You know, always easier to do the dishes at someone else's house. So if you think of that, that you team up with a friend, and I first started teaching this in 2015, and there are three groups that are still doing this, and they've been doing it since 2015 and they meet three Thursdays out of the month and make phone calls on each other's behalf. And they are all of them out there speaking. It, it really does work. So that's a way that you can do it for no money or you can somebody to make the phone calls for you. The key is you've got to do it. You've got to do it, and I'm I'm really good at procrastinating, so um, mm -hmm. it's it's too easy for me to put things off. 
So this is why I have to set up accountability for myself to make me do it. But that's like an awesome idea. Never, I never thought about it, you know? In a simple, a simple thing, uh, uh, yeah, a simple thing to do, like in, in essence, is simple. Uh, the, the difficult thing is to find someone who could commit the same level and you commit yourself, as you said. But yes, I can see how it can work. But as you may have to find two or you may have to two or three people to find someone that you really click with going to really do it. Yeah. And I uh, from everything you said so far, it, it's it requires us to setting time apart to really dig in and deciding, yes. well, first, you need to know your audience because otherwise you don't know where you want to be. And and then who are these people who are already uh, talking to your audience? Because um, uh, one of my mentors said um, that you don't need because people say you need to drive traffic. You need to create traffic to you, to yourself, to what you do. And he says, no, you don't need to create. The traffic is already there. You need to go where the traffic is. Find the people who are already communicating to your audience. Go there and see how can you you drive, you take the traffic, part of it at least, to to your own um to your own area. So this is would be this would be a great way of achieving that as well. But yes, um, there there's works to do there in the the planning and the strategy and etc. Well, this is why I wanted to start with the four different ways of being online, the four different categories, is to figure out which one is going to make the most sense for you because speaking on podcasts regularly speaking on podcasts is worth it if it fits our business model but if it doesn't then mm -hmm. um then it's a waste of time then you could do it every once in a while so you have something to advertise on social media but really it is an investment of time mm -hmm. it's a great it can bring huge returns but you do have to decide if that's going to make sense for you or not. Exactly, uh, because there are several platforms out there, and not everybody's good on video. And uh, everybody says, "Oh, video is the thing because it's visual, and now you have the the transcription, and then people can just see and read," which I do a lot when I'm watching mm -hmm. TV or something. But not everybody's good on video, and but some people, uh, the audio takes like the podcast takes away the video, so then you can be more relaxed, <laughs> you can still be in your pajama if you like, but uh, but uh, but then you have to really uh, be aware of your voice, right? And how yeah. you speak and et cetera. And, um, and one thing I've learned so far, um, because I'm really digging into this topic, because I've been reading a lot of everything that's happening uh, in terms of what, will happen in this new normal and definitely uh reading the financial times last weekend last yesterday mm -hmm. and it's clear that as you said very well it's not going to be back uh, the live experience as we knew before is not going to be back that no. soon so i'm urging people with these talks that you start really thinking how can I transition what I'm doing? It doesn't mean that you are going to give up everything you're doing before, but how can I transition what I'm doing, I was doing before to the online? And who, then there are many questions you have to ask. You no, know? who am I? How I want to present myself? What is the best platform for, for me to present my business? And which is aligned with what I want to say. And also um, one thing, let's see if you agree with me that uh, we should not go crazy trying to be omnipresent that we just choose yeah. maybe one or two well you you spoke earlier about there's so much out there now mm -hmm. <clears throat> so how do we stand out and that's where i get back to the who i still think that it's better to know who are the people who can then recommend you and how can you speak 
where you've been referred and someone says, oh yes, I've heard of this person. So this is a good, one of the really good things about podcast is that the podcast host is endorsing you by mm. getting, having you on the podcast. They're saying, ah, Tulia Lopez is someone worth listening to. She's someone that I want to have on my podcast. So that already gives you credibility to be able to talk about, uh, makes people more inclined to listen. And so that's very important. Uh, it still gets back to who do you know and who knows your audience who can introduce you. That's back to the basics, absolute basics of networking. Absolutely. And yes, and we, we again, back to your, what you said in terms of the strategy. And you, you have the podcast, um, Elizabeth, but mm -hmm. do you, are you uh, more focused on that? for keeping going with your business and you using more the podcast or you using something else as well? I am using the podcast as an entryway. So here's the good thing about having a podcast or having a webinar show the way Tulia does is there are many, many, many ways you can leverage it. For instance, I, um, I, interview interesting people and then i ask them who do you know who should know about me who do you know who needs what i can who who needs a presentation skills trainer i can also use it i i use it to produce things i just recorded yesterday a an episode about how do you deal with objections because i have a lot of clients who their customers are coming up to them saying uh, we have no you know, budget is shrinking. How do I, how, you know, what do I do? They all, nobody wants to pay me anymore. And my thought as we were speaking before we started the recording is it is their job to ask for a discount. It's not necessarily your job to give a discount, but use it as a way of negotiating. And there are many, many people who just say, oh, okay, you're leaving me, the customer leaves, they're done, instead of trying to keep the relationship going. Mm. Because business will come back. It always does. It will look different. It will be in a different format. But business will come back, especially since we have the internet. So the entire economy is in difficulty around the world, but it's not dead. It's mm -hmm. not finished. It's not, you know, it's not as if somebody's bombed your city and you have no home left. We have this great advantage of the online platform. So how can you at least keep the conversation going? And then I can use that now. Somebody has a question for me. I say, oh, I just did a podcast episode about it. Listen to this. And most of the time, if they listen to one, they'll listen to three or four. And then, so again, it's a, it's something that you can leverage. Yes. And as back to what I said is a moment for us as well, um, moving to the online world and to see how we can adapt what we are doing, our services, our, our trainings into this new platform, because, mm -hmm. um, we can leverage more in the online so because you can reach more people so how you can automatize your work as well i've been taking the opportunity of this co uh, confinement to really dig into marketing funnels and strategies like uh, um, things like this well because i also like it i really enjoy and marketing is full about communication and it's for me, uh, many things have been revealed, like in terms of how I have is that, uh, back on what you just said, how I have to think ahead to keep this continuous relationship with my client, because in the live environment, uh, as before, it's it was easier in a way just to keep the touch. You you just let's mm -hmm. meet coffee. 
right? And now if you, if you consider that you can leverage, you can reach more people. And most of mm -hmm. these people won't have really a face for you because you might not see them. You might not contact with them directly, yeah? In this, uh, if you uh, have your service automatized in a way, but how you can still keep this conversation going with them for one service that you uh, uh, offer after the other, it requires a, a lot of a strategy in marketing planning as well. Well, that's also, I think that this time of sheltering in place is a gift. Mm. It is a gift to us to give us a chance to go back and look at our businesses and see what's, you know, to work on your business as well as in your business. And so that's another thing. It is something that we can really use this time for. Or if you are thinking about speaking or you want to develop a new topic, this is the time to be writing that speech and finding that new audience. Absolutely. Yes, I, I would say there's a lot of it we can learn and to um, and take the most for, for this this moment. I I don't have my more questions to you here because I would love to see if people would like to ask something. Can everybody raise your, you can, there's a little hand here. You can raise your hand to speak or you can write it here in the chat. If you want to ask your questions to Elizabeth, take the most of it because she is, she has a lot of nuggets of wisdom to share with us here. Because, um, there are many, I, I still find out I, while people is still thinking what they want to ask you, Elizabeth, there's a comment here. Um, I realize that change is always a challenge, right? To mm -hmm. everybody. Yes. And the reason I decided to uh, put these webinars, these interviews together in, in this topic is because I do believe we uh, the sooner the sooner we start understanding that the the world is not going to function anymore the way we it were used to right. and there's this big platform out there this platform what is available because there are there were many people already on this road for many 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 years and even more in America in your part of the world because you know you're much ahead than us here in Europe in uh, to that respect so um i what i uh, want to say is to the people who are here tonight if you're here is because you're curious about something mm -hmm. and i keep saying to people like we need to not only be curious n knowledge is important but always finds way find ways to take action on that mm -hmm. note i would say Elizabeth here is here. I would give uh, her contact to you. Afterwards, you can contact her if you have any questions. You can always contact me, but it's important that uh, you start taking this step very seriously. And there's a question here from Elizabeth. You talked about what you need as a speaker, but I missed one. Could you please repeat them? Oh, the four, the four things, uh, the four areas, I believe, yeah. Uh, what you need as a speaker, if you're going to promote, propose yourself as a speaker, you need to have the speaker one sheet. This is a list of, of the topics that you speak to. And I have been doing that for many years. I've now made a different a different document, which I just keep as a, a Word document on my computer that has the, the points I can talk about, but it also has my social media links, my bio, uh, because I ask people, I tell that I have people read that I worked with Luciano Pavarotti and Placido Domingo. I have a bio for reading out loud that's in 18 point type, so it's easy to read. And it's also, uh, I spell out, how do you pronounce Luciano Pavarotti and Placido Domingo? Because a lot of people have trouble with that 
So if you have a name that's difficult to pronounce, make sure that you include the pronunciation with it so that the, the host doesn't mangle it <laughs> for you. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so it's useful to have that of, um, if you can send a copy of a short version of a place where you've spoken so they can, they can see what you're like. I do a Facebook Live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. European time, which is 9 a.m. on the West Coast or noon on the East Coast of America. I do Facebook Live that's eight, 10 minutes long. So that's an easy way for someone to see what I look like, that I can speak, that I'm interesting. And it's a good way to have some samples. So it's good to have some clips that you can send. And I have links to that. It's all in one document. And then when they ask you for that, you can, you just copy and paste. I have a note to say here because, um, of course, we always said the videos, no? It's always so important to have a very good video of you in action. So you can send to the client, can, mm -hmm. can really feel you on stage. Okay, so let's consider the new situation right now. If you don't have that video done yet, so you're gonna have to wait for a while uh, to have that video. But uh, as soon as you get the opportunity, try to get a professional video recorder with you to get that video. Because the other day I was thinking, oh my goodness, I never put so much attention to do a TEDx talk. And now mm -hmm. I don't know when I would have uh, the opportunity even to apply for one. So, but now in this moment that we are living in, so what are the possibilities? How can we portray ourselves as speaker uh, in a very professional way in these platforms? So it will require that um, everybody here um, to really start digging in and finding out, trying out until you find what's the best for you. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, as mm -hmm. I always say, I, I'm away from perfection, but um, but it's better, uh, done is always better than perfect. Yes, exactly, exactly. And it's really, it's very important to do that. So the more you're out there online, the thing about video is that Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube and all of that and Google, this is how people find you and video material shows up first. So it's really for search engine optimization reasons is, and I resisted video for a long time. Yeah. And I finally, I finally last year started getting out there and saying, okay, I've committed to doing Facebook lives every Wednesday for at least 10 minutes for at least a year because and and i got over being afraid of it but mm. i it was mostly because i wasn't comfortable i wasn't used to it and since i wasn't used to it and i wasn't comfortable i didn't do it so mm. i finally i had a friend who basically put my arm behind my back and said you will do this you have to promise me you will do this again that's accountability I needed somebody who would hold me accountable. And I said, all right, I will commit to this for a year. But um, it took me a while. And considering I've been on stage, I can get up live is easy. Getting up in front of video, I was nervous. Yeah, yes, it, it requires some, some practice and also to have a script because you just don't want to be there, blah, blah, blah. You want to... to to get something that's concise and that gives a message and it is important. I have a question here from Vaida. Mm -hmm. she, she asks, from your experience, what's the best length of a podcast? Do people like shorter or longer talks? And thank you. People usually like shorter. So if you're gonna do a Facebook Live interview, 20 to 30 minutes, for a podcast, it's 30 to 40. And I've been looking at doing short versions. I find that the short Facebook lives keep it under 10 minutes. If it's under 10 minutes, you can record it and then you can post it on LinkedIn if it's under 10 minutes. And my, my main customers are on LinkedIn. 
to do, but to really get information out there, you need 20, 30 minutes. Mm. If you have a co if you have a group who is committed to working with you, then you can do 45 minutes to an hour. Mm. So it really depends on, and the best is to have a, have a mix, just mm. have a mix of various possibilities. And then you can show people with, with 10 minutes, you can really only maybe list some points, but you can only really give information, good information about one. I, I've seen many, um, well, not many, few of um, marketeers that I know, they insist that you have to be online almost every day if you can. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think it's, for me, it's out of question. But I would say at least a good way to start is start with once a week, right? At mm -hmm. least start. And I'm saying that, but I'm, <laughs> I'm pushing and postponing that for quite a while because I do it more spontaneously. But for, for everybody here, try choose your platform and first your message. What do you want to talk about? The structure you want to use and then choose your platform and try it's starting once a week and then you go trying another platform and then you see how it goes. But it's important that we always start moving on to the online world. Well, the, and the other thing is it's back to rule number one, <clears throat> rule number one in presenting is it's about your audience. So mm -hmm. where is your audience? Is your audience on Instagram? Is your audience on on Pinterest, for instance, if, if you're mm -hmm. a visual artist, uh, Pinterest is very important. I work very closely with a stylist. Again, you can look at my Facebook Lives. Last week, we did a 30-minute interview on how to look look great on mm -hmm. online. So going beyond the basics, it's really to to give yourself a great uh, a great online presence present look. And she's on Pinterest all the time. I really, my people aren't really on Printus. My people are mostly on LinkedIn and they follow Facebook. I find Facebook and LinkedIn are the two best for me. There are a lot of people who are doing a lot with YouTube, a lot with Instagram. It just depends on where your audience is. Basically, you want to go to where your audience is. Absolutely. Yes. And I, I heard a, a one the other day, which I really like, is like your, your audience is your thermometer. Mm -hmm. So it, you really have to be checking and see what they're doing, what they're talking about, where they are moving, and you follow them in a way. Yes. Well, yeah. we have three minutes left because I really want us to uh, finish in one hour. Any other questions from you there, guys, who are watching us? Thank you for being with us up to now. This is a very, um, we really appreciate your presence here. Absolutely. Elizabeth just apologized that she has another call and that she had to to uh, to leave, and she's thanking us for for the our conversation today. So make it. Yes. Yeah. So as I see, people are very quiet. I think we can. Oh, don't disappear before. No, I, can I thank I'm you. still here. I'm still here. <laughs> before oh, I this is so thank frustrating. You properly for being here. So Elizabeth has given me a link for an assessment. Elizabeth, can you take a, a talk just a little bit about this um, this assessment? So an easy way to find out uh, is to really for you to find out how your presentation skills are strong is to go to my free quiz. It's called speakforresultsquiz.com. That's www.speakforresultsquiz.com. And then it takes three or four minutes where you can see where you are really strong with your presentation skills and where you might need a little bit of support. And that's the best way to reach me because if you do that, I will get a copy of it and then I can check in with you and see how you feel. That's awesome. I would do it as well. Let's see. Let's see what happens. And for all, I hope you come back before I finish. So you're back before you go. go. Yes. Thank you so much Help for being down. here. And uh, I will send the recording. You, Everybody will receive the recording. And your link is already in the email. 
that will be sent to them. So they thank can you so much, be in touch with you. So thank you for being here and thank stay you, my safe. Friend. Yeah, stay safe. And when you have the opportunity to come back close to me and this time for sure we have to meet this this time for sure we live so close to each other we just just a little mountain range we just have to go over the mountains so but where are you now are you in america or I, you're here? actually i'm in america okay uh, i'm not i'm not in austria uh, the travel ban happened three days before i was supposed to fly and i, I actually thought i thought it would only last a couple of weeks and oh guess not but yeah. um no, I'm, I think I'm going to be in America till the fall now. That's okay. the way things look. And certainly the, the border between Bavaria and the Tyrol is still closed. So yes, we couldn't, yes. we wouldn't be able to have coffee anyway. No, we are very quiet here, I, I'm telling you. Okay, mm -hmm. so thank you again, Elizabeth. Thank, thank you, you all for being here with us. And we continue. Okay. We continue. Bye.